morning. It's Good Friday of Holy Week, April 10th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Startled, and our scripture is Isaiah chapter 52. See, my servant will prosper. He will be highly exalted. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured he hardly seemed human. And from his appearance one would scarcely know he was a man. And he will startle many nations. Kings will stand speechless in his presence. For they will see what they had not been told. They will understand what they had not heard about. To say that the Apostle Peter was startled when Jesus began to wash his feet is to muddle around in the understated. Peter was mortified that the Holy One could even bear to have him around, much less treat him so well as to kneel in front of him like some faceless servant. But that's the nature of the greatest of all. He's willing to become the least of all, to lift up the most lost of all. Isaiah's prophecy pointed to the startling, amazing, mouth-dropping reaction we have at seeing a humbled God, a crucified God. And it worries us greatly, because if he's like that, and we're his disciples, the specter of becoming like that is in our future. It's in our DNA, this understanding of God's image in us. We hardly think about it with the front burner of our minds, but deep inside, we want to be exalted. We want to be lifted up in the center of attention. If you doubt that, just watch a two-year-old for a while. But at the same time, because of God's image or stamp on our souls, we know our sin disqualifies this self-worship and separates us from even being near the throne, much less on it. Like Peter, we're startled, even repulsed, by the thought of it. This is what troubled young Francis of Assisi as he struggled with the pathway of his own conversion to Christ. According to one story of his journey, early in the process of committing his life to God's way, Francis was riding a horse down a road that passed a leper colony. Lepers were the dirty side of life, emaciated, gray, and despised. The horse saw the leper in the middle of the road and was startled. When Francis finally got the beast under control, he saw the bedraggled, nearly former human standing in front of him. After a long, frightening, paralyzing moment, he dismounted, he went to the man, who was motionless, expressionless, nearly lifeless, except for the automatic, unthinking breathing of lungs and beating of what was left of his heart. Doing the unthinkable, Francis took the leper's hand. It was a poor, emaciated hand, blood-stained and cold like that of a corpse. Francis pressed the hand and brought it to his lips. As he kissed the lacerated flesh of the creature who was the most abject, the most hated, the most scorned of all human beings, he was flooded with a wave of emotion that shut out everything around him. It taught him that following Christ may require doing some things that repulse us. What Francis didn't know then was that something greater was prompting him, allowing him to do that which, humanly speaking, he was incapable of doing. Perhaps the greatest lesson Francis learned in this moment was what Jesus did for Francis. Because when Jesus died for Francis on Calvary, he was kissing the sin lepers of all eternity. And that kiss makes us whole. For you today, there's no shortage of lepers in this world. When's the last time you kissed one? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.